I have been continuing my TX, TXHSFB303 series. Yes. i got to find a better way to... This seemingly has no end. I had thought uh, early last week that you had exhausted your ideas, but you're on a roll, man. I'm going to go throughout January. And wow. I'm not, okay. going to, I'm not going to promise that it's going to be every day in January, no, it, but, it's, but I will continue it through... Yeah. Are there 31 days in January? Let's not worry about 30 that. Days, half, this is not a math show. I'm gonna count yes, to carry the, yes carry, there are 31 days. One the, of my best carry friends' the four, birthdays is on the 31st. Carry, carry the four. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm going to try to continue through, but but one thing that I've done a lot is I've been doing things based around defenses. Uh, you know, as far as today, I, I wrote one about shutouts in Texas high school football, yes. uh, and particularly that they are they're about even. They're they're a li- they're a step up from how many shutouts there were in 2014. Right. Uh, it's a mild step back from the number of shutouts in 2015, stuff like that. But one thing that I feel like I've been leading off all these articles with is, yeah. okay, we all admit that Texas high school football is an offensive game, right? right? You know, right. we're we're all pretty sure. We're scoring sure. so many points right now. Yeah. There's so many points. Yeah. We, we are pretty sure that there are, that this is an offense first game. Right. And it's score first, ask questions right. later. So, I want to make sure that I wasn't talking out of my butt. Sure. You know what I mean? As I am want to do. You know that I tend to talk. No one's out better of at it, man. Real, I am exceptional. That is why you are <laughs> television's Greg Tepper. I am exceptional at man. talking out of my butt for like three hours at a time on Fox Sports Southwest, yeah. eight to eleven p.m. Fox Sports Southwest in the fall. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that uh, that I wasn't talking out of my butt. Yeah. And so I went in and I crunched the numbers. Yeah. Is scoring up recently? So for this particular study, I decided to look at last year's scoring averages. I broke it down by classification as well. Yeah. Um, last year's scoring averages, and I was deciding, it's like, okay, do you want to compare it to, to last year? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, year by year, there can be hiccups and stuff like that. You want to take a longer term. Right. And so I decided to go 10 years back to the 2006 season. So mm-hmm. we're comparing the 2006 season against the 2016 season, as far as scoring is concerned. And uh, look... I'm going to spoil the end of it here for you. And by the way, we only looked at public schools and we only looked at 11-man football. Uh, Six-man football can get a little wonky with the 45-point mercy rule. Um, And then private schools are, you know, private schools are kind of their own thing in my mind. So I looked at the scoring averages. Do you think that the scoring averages for Texas high school football are up or down? Uh, Up. You are correct. I, I know. I know, because you, you have the numbers. I don't have I, anything. I don't no, know. I'm just very smart. Yeah, you're a liar. Uh, <laughs> so, scoring is up across the board. Okay. Every classification is up t- from 10 years ago. And Not every class. Classific- and every classification is up by a pretty significant margin. Yeah. The... Is that my phone? No. Oh. <laughs> it is my phone. Wow. Unbelievable. Can't believe that. My bad. <laughs> I, I never have my phone on. It's weird. Yeah, well. um, I think I know who that is too. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> sorry. We have somebody else in the in the uh, in the what? room. We'll explain it to you later. So, so I looked at the the, the scoring average, and the scoring is up pretty significantly. Now, we compared six A to six A, but there was no six A back then, right? Right. So it's six A to five A, five A to four A, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have a conversion table for that? I do. <laughs> Plus one. Okay. So the average amount of points scored by a Texas high school football public school 11-man team in 2016, mm-hmm. 28.1 points. 28 points, which is, I think, a lot. If that's your average, that means right. every team is averaging four touchdowns a game. Right. That seems like a lot. Sure. Compare that to 2006 when the average was 23.9 points per game. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we have seen overall an increase in scoring of 4.2 points per game yeah. per team. Yeah. So we're basically adding an extra touchdown to every game Right. is the way to think of it because yeah. each team is scoring more points than um, – each team is scoring more points, uh, four more points per game. Right. It's basically, you know, it's 8.4 points per game. Yeah. Just call it a touchdown. You Overall. Know? Overall, Correct. there's an extra touchdown yeah. in every game. The biggest, and, and, and what's funny is that there's not one culprit. In fact, you'd think like, oh, well, 6A, because they've got all the right. blue-chip quarterbacks right. and all this fun stuff. Right. Well, they actually have the smallest leap. Right. They have gone up only 3.7 points. They have right. the smallest increase. 
The biggest increase is in 4A. Do you have a theory on why? Yes. Okay. I do. I think 4A, I think 4A is the point in which you have to start making decisions as to whether or not to put guys on offense or defense. Okay. And I feel like it and where it can make the biggest difference and I feel like the move has been to put more explosive players on offense. Okay. That is that is my theory. I'd be I think that's probably I'd be interested in hearing yours. That's a decent one. I would say in general if you're looking at the at this trend from 3.7 at the top to 4.2 at the bottom, I get that there's flux in the middle. Um, I would say the margins are finer, mm-hmm. right? At the top level, the margins are finer. You have more top-level athletes. Mm-hmm. You have more top-level size. You, size. you have more top-level coaching. Correct. The disparities as you go farther down, I think, probably explains some of it, but yeah. probably not all. Yeah, and, and what? Well, and the thing is, this is all this da- data does is seem to confirm what I've been going through in my TX, TXHS FB303. we got to come up with a better name. Right. Um, series. Well, it looks fine in print. It's hard to say. That, for example, right, um, it's it's easy to write. It's yes. just not easy to – but for me, like, if you go back and you look, we had five games go more than 150 points this, game, right. this year. And I feel like, okay, well, that's – Greg, you're, you're picking – you're picking – you're cherry-picking here. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like that's indicative of the way things are moving. That, like, that's helping to drive up the right. average, of course. But I also feel like we're having more games that are – more than 140 points and yeah. more than 130 points. Like right. we're getting more and more high scoring games. Like when's the last time we saw I mean, think about think about the state championship games, okay? Right. What was the low I mean, we had team we had Bremont put up what, forty nine? Yes. We had them put up forty nine. The lowest was probably Refurio and Crawford, right? Twenty three and twenty. Yeah. Overall, like both teams, if you're combining a total score. Yeah, I mean we had yeah, we had some low scoring games, but they were the exception they were, they were the exception they were the exception as opposed yeah. to the rule and i know that again we're talking about you know we're, we're talking about individual games yes. but that also tends to um the, all that does is confirm right what we've seen you know what what these these larger data points seem seem to indicate so yeah refurio is 23 20 that's the lowest scoring game right bremont put up 49 Mineola put up 35 gunner put up 43 carthage put up 31 uh, you know, Western Stark was a low-scoring game, right. twenty-four to six. That's true. That's, That's true. your low-scoring game of the weekend. Uh, Highland Park and Temple was low-scoring as well, sixteen right. to seven. But you had twenty-four sixteen. You know, you had score. You had points scored in pretty much every single game. Heck, Lake Travis put up forty-one. Yes. So, I feel like all those things are indicating that okay, you do have to be able to play defense to win a state championship, but the the amount of defense that you have to play is changing. Right. That if you can hold teams, it used to be that if you gave up 21 points in a game, like yeah. it was over. Like you right. weren't going to, you know. Now, as long as you keep teams at about 24, you can right. usually expect to win. And so, is so the the big question, and I tweeted this out: Is defense dying in Texas high school football? I will say they're on the back foot right now. Yeah, they're you on know? the back foot. But I mean, it's such a. <laughs> It's a, there's a multi. It's a multi-angled question, Correct. right? You could argue that defenses have actually gotten better because if sure. they hadn't, they wouldn't be coping this well, right? Agreed. I agree with that. But the question, but but at some point, you know, and we we agree that football over the course of uh, over the course of time is a chess match. Yeah. That like the def- like the offenses will innovate something, and the defenses will find something to catch up. Mm-hmm. Like the slot T dominated, and they found out a way to stop the slot right. T. Correct. And then here comes the uh, you know the pro style, and they found a way to do the pro style. Well, yeah. at this point, the spread offense has taken over Texas high school football, and we cannot. And defenses have not yet been able to find a way. Right to counteract and find the find the diagnosis for the spread for the spread offense. Right. And so we're still going there. And maybe at some point I I, I do believe that football is cyclical. And I feel yeah. like we will get to a point Defense where defenses will, will catch it up here. and this yeah. this this will drop. It may not drop to twenty four again, but it might drop to twenty six. Maybe as far as points per game. But for me, right now the offenses are winning. Yeah. The offensive coordinators in Texas high school football yeah. are winning right now. Yeah. It is up to the defensive coordinators and the defensive minds in the state of Texas to yeah. find a way to counteract it. So that's just me. I feel yeah. like I feel like transitionally it's we're still in it, right? Mm-hmm. Like talking to Ryan Reed at the College Gridiron Showcase, former Baylor player, former sure. Sherman player. The how the amount of the defensive game has changed from his time at Sherman to now, mm-hmm. you know, where he's leaving Baylor. 
So you just can't imagine how much running you're doing yeah. on defense. And he's like, people just don't. You're running so much more than you used to have to mm -hmm. on defense. And I, I, until we figure out, until defensive coordinators kind of figure out how to make that adjustment and figure out what the overall sort of strategy changes to keep those guys in line, I don't. Yeah, you I know, think you're we're right. We're not going to get there. And 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 part of it is, you know, that's the that's the beauty of Texas high school football is for me you are stuck with the players that you got. Well, yeah. Like there's sure. no yeah. draft, yeah. there's no recruiting, there's no right. like these are the players you got and you got to deploy them. Yeah. Now some teams have more talent than others, yeah. but you have to determine how to deploy your players. So yeah. it's it's an interesting chess match. I'm interested to see what the defensive coordinators in the state come up with. Got in, some good ones in too. order to counteract what is, in my mind, an offensive tidal wave right now. Yeah.